My name is Miroslav Suchy. I come from the Red Hat. Uh, I was working with SPD Star uh, stuff for about a year as a side project. And from that comes uh, like my interest in the software bill of materials because I, I, I hit it quite often and I wonder what, what, what the hell it does. So before I start, like how many of you heard about software bill of materials before this presentation? Okay, okay, almost everyone, I guess. And how many of you know what software bill of material is? Okay, we have two experts that know more than I do. So uh, I guess you check who raised the hand and then ask question with them not me after the presentation. Uh, so I promise to deliver you explanation very easy term. So promise me if I will not be precise, I'll be just for the dummies for the entry level as I am I. So the software build materials is very easy. It's basically, and the best analogy I heard is it's a list of ingredients from which the product is made of. This describes you from which ingredients the uh, product is made of. So what, anyone want to guess what, what it actually is? I, and usually the, uh, the order is from the most important material of the product to the least important uh, materials of, uh, in the product. Very close is shampoo. So that's washing powder for the, for the hairs. Uh, uh, yeah, but it doesn't show you and doesn't tell you what or how the product is made of. So it's not a recipe. It doesn't tell you whether you put everything in one pot and cook it together as I know on top or you do that in some precise steps. So the software bill of materials in IT world give you this picture. Nothing else, it doesn't tell you how to handle this tiny part, this problematic part. It doesn't tell you what the big blocks are or like how to work with that. It just gives you this picture and then it's up to you. This is actually maybe the biggest problem of the software built materials that it, it's not solution. It gives you just one thin layer which you can uncover and under that, is a huge pile of other problems you may need to solve, like what to do with the dependencies, what to do with the vulnerabilities, how to replace something. So, so it's a whole rabbit hole into other stuff which you previously didn't knew about, you didn't care about, and now probably you should care about it because security stuff, etc. Uh, so it's just just map of your product, uh, not solution what to do with that. Back to the food pro, uh, analogy uh, to show you like what can happen with your product uh, and how the software bill of materials may help you. This is uh, my favorite sauce from my local supermarket from the Lidl. And I, uh, I was hit by this several times because you bought it, this is nice tomato sauce of, uh, for, for a pasta. Uh, nothing on the ticket that may warn you. This is the ingredient, sorry, it's in check, and you again start at the most important stuff. So it's tomato, uh, tomato sauce, then uh, some onion, and that's it, and some silly stuff at the end. Uh, but the silly stuff at the very end is the chili. And it's actually so spicy that my daughter can't eat it. So I have a whole pot of the pasta for myself. Uh, it's very, very spicy. And it's not said on the front page like hot Italian pasta. So you have to have the bill of materials, the ingredients to actually find it. And this, the very same thing goes for the software bill of materials. Only when you see the big picture, that XKCD uh, diagram, you can find, okay, this part is probably very at the bottom, very tiny, but 
supports all these big blocks and maybe problematics and maybe do something about it in future. So how the software bill of materials actually looks? It can look like this. This is software bill of materials for some virtual artificial made company. Uh, it just lists what you are using in your project, in your company. It's just not too interchangeable. Like if you send it to other company, they can't merge it, they can't process it too well. So it doesn't work very well in our current distributed world. Uh, so we probably want to something else. And uh, around year 2020, 21, we had some ex accident, uh, famous solar winds, Microsoft has some issues as well. So, so UK, US, uh, uh, no, have cybersecurity executive order. Uh, we said you have to use software bill of materials. It will help you to auditing, give you the map of what you have in your system. It will help you find vulnerabilities in those tiny boxes at the bottom. Uh, and it uh, can help you finding the licensing of the project because again, some tiny box at the bottom can be can have strange license which prohibits everything on at, at the top. So since that, uh, it becomes a thing, uh, and people start uh, caring about it because they were forced to do, it, and it's actually a good thing that they were first forced. Uh, so the cybersecurity executive order said that the software bill of materials should have at least these fields. There are other fields, but they uh, can be optional. Uh, so you have to have supplier name, component names, and etc. So, so some fields. Uh, and uh, from that moment, we have two, not competing standards, we have actually two uh, coexisting standards. One of them is SPDX uh, standard. It actually started around uh, 2011 and it started as a licensing auditing tool. So, so the origin are around licensing and licensing management, but then grew up to the full uh, software bill of materials uh, management tool. Uh, then we have Sweet Text, which actually is not actually software bill of materials uh, format specification. It just allows you to uh, identify component. And, and, and last uh, is Cyclone DX, uh, uh, which uh, is um, more recent stuff. Uh, it comes from the DevOps origin, and it's very lightweight and focus on uh, how to describe which component has which vulnerabilities and whether it is good for you or whether you should upgrade some components. Uh, so they have different uh, goals, different audience, uh, and both SPDX and Cyclone DX is, is fine. So if you are interested in, what in your project, I, I, I don't, one of them is fine. How do uh, software bill of materials actually looks. So, so this is example of the S uh, software bill of materials, uh, the actual SPDX uh, document. And uh, if you if you notice, uh, there is some header preamble, uh, and there is something which describes the component, uh, and uh, that's some package name. Hello, and there are some information. And if you come from the Red Hat Fedora world. It may reassemble you to uh, RPM preamble section. So there are most things from there. Then we have the list of the files. Again, something which you can easily fetch with RPM dash Q dash dash list. Uh, and then some identification. So actually, if you are using RPM or any other package manager, this is very easy to retrieve with few rpm dash query commands and within 15 minutes you can have software bill of materials. From my point of view, the most problematic part is this one. 
and this was the license. And in this case, it's a license declared MIT, which means the upstream, the author of the package declares that it's under MIT license and license concluded, means that I didn't care about it, uh, like no assertion. Uh, I just took it and passed it pay, uh, and I didn't try to do anything about it, find it, audit. So this is something which we are trying to change in Fedora uh, now, because uh, right now we can even do this, because uh, in Fedora we are using the old system identifier, we call it now uh, Callaway system, because it originated from the Tom Callaway, uh, who was a legal guy in that time in Fedora, and he invented the identifiers for the uh, licensing. So he said, okay, GPL version two should have identifier GPL V2, and that's it. But it was not standard, no one actually used that, but Fedora, uh, so now we are moving to SPDX uh, list from the standard, uh, and we are actually trying to audit it again, uh, what licenses the packages is using. Uh, and this is a uh, way you may hear about SPDX in Fedora. I'm, I'm, I'm sending every two weeks uh, statistic how we are going with the conversion to the, uh, to the SPDX identifier. This is uh, current burn, not down, but burn up chart. Uh, and hopefully next year, uh, after summer, we will be finished. If we do something miracle, we may be even faster. Right now, my, I and, and a few other people are focusing just on the licensing ID. There is a uh, guys from the product security uh, who works on the software bill of materials itself. Uh, for the first time in history, we have the data about licensing in machine readable format because previously in the Callaway system it was in just in the wiki and it was just described in HTML page. Right now we have in JSON and in TOML files uh, the, the, the license and set, uh, uh, attributes, whether they can be used for anything or just for data or fonts, etc. We have even the uh, formal grammar, uh, so you can you build your parser uh, and say what is good and bad. Uh, one interesting situation is that we changed the uh, no effective license evaluation. It's slightly complicated this migration and that's actually why it is so slow uh, because that means that previously when there was a license uh, and there was a that's a real situation there was a package one parallel package which say this package can be licensed under any open source license uh, and when you come with that you say okay i'm choosing gpl version 2 uh, and put it as a license field uh, in in the package uh, right now you can't evaluate or the guidelines are that you should not do that uh, and you should actually say that it's uh, uh, and that was the longest string in the, in the, uh, from the all RPM spec so you should G GPL version 1 or GPL version 2 or GPL version 3 or what the fuck public license or MIT uh, or Apache and it was 80, 100 uh, characters long. Uh, we are right now in the process of getting the, uh, because the SPDX is, it's, it's, not, it's not so young, but it's definitely younger than the Fedora. So Fedora has a longer list of the licenses we have uh, than, than, than the SPDX have. So some of the licenses are not in SPDX list, so we are trying to push it there very hard. A lot of licenses has been recently then added because of the Fedora. In case there is uh, no license in the SPDX, uh, which uh, and you for some reason don't want to add it there, you can do the standard use license ref dash something, and it means that's your own license and uh, it will never be in SPDX uh, list, and it's up to you to describe what's the, what's the meaning uh, of that license. Now, you may think that, okay, Thank you, Mirek. You explaining what software bill of material is, and now I'm uh, supervised, and that's enough yeah, for me, and I don't need any other information. This was just scratch of that thing. 
Um, and uh, what I described and what you actually thought about it is the uh, analyze of variable of materials. So the list and uh, document which you create when you are building package for RPM or container. But you can have various types uh, of the build of materials. For example, the build. So you may describe what GCC you used during building of the packages. Which version was it? Was, it, um, was there some vulnerabilities in that time when you were building the software? Or you can use the source type, like was it hosted on the GitLab or the GitHub in the time when there was some security incident, artificial made example. Uh, or otherwise, were uh, on, on, or the other round uh, down. So, so deployed. Uh, so, is your uh, software deployed together with some other software, which together may cause some problems? Or, what's actually needed for the runtime? So, so your software is using um, storage SD buckets from the Amazon. So, uh, but. It's not described there, and it may be problem. So, so you can have runtime of materials which try to put even this uh, relation and dependency on S3 buckets. And it can be Amazon version of S3 or some capital <coughs> version of a uh, small shop provider which may have some vulnerabilities. And it depends what you are actually using. And there are other stuff which I probably don't want to mention here because there will be no more easy and no more for dummies. Uh, so, what we, so what we, I will conclude it with that. What we learned, uh, that we learned that SBOM is just a map. It's a list of ingredients, what makes your software. Uh, that we have two parallel standards, one from the SPDX, from the Cyclone DX, both are acceptable. Uh, that bill of materials is actually easy to uh, generate if you are using RPM, if you are using containers made of scratch from uh, GitHub deployed directly, then uh, you may have some problems. Uh, but the licensing from that is the most tricky part, uh, likely. And uh, we have various SBOM types, uh, and uh, the rabbit holes go deep down. That's it. Any question for me? Uh, so the, the, the question is, uh, what will uh, happen if we use two pieces of software, one with BSD, one from the kernel, which is incompatible? Uh, so I may answer it for Fedora, but I may not answer it regarding the software bill of materials, because software bill of materials don't care. It's just map. So, so you may say, OK, I have this uh, whole deployment. And I have one part of uh, BSD and one part of GPL version 2. It's fine. Or if it is some proprietary software or some like hidden secret and no one knows, no one sues you, fine. The, the customer may be fine or not. It just maps. So, so it doesn't tell you what you should do. Uh, and it's up to you. Uh, and uh, in Fedora, I don't know, like if it is different component, then it's fine. If it is linked together, then it's not fine. And it's more question for legals. Uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure this answer will not be straightforward. <laughs> so I don't know. I like question. So for the record, uh, so uh, when, what I consider uh, most important for generating 
as, as bomb, was, that, that was the question, right? Oh, I, oh I, I'm not sure whether I can answer it because I'm coming from the licensing part, so the SBOM for me is some, some additional part, uh, uh, which I was like just curious wh what the hell it is. Uh, uh, so, so I'm not directly working with, uh, with the software bill of materials documents. Uh, so I don't even know whether a SpeedX or Cyclone DX is better. Uh, but uh, what I found interesting in one dis discussion is that uh, and that that you should have tools that generate it. Like I'm not even thinking about like that people should generate it. That should be fully automated. Uh, and there is a, a one initiative which uh, tries to provide a tool that. Uh, the S bomb will be added to every software project. Uh, how you can do that? Because uh, and when you retrieve it together with Tarball from the upstream, and you retrieve this software bill of materials, you may or not trust it. Uh, and if you don't trust it and you want to validate it, then you should have a tool which actually generate your own bill of materials. Uh, and then you can compare it and see whether it's valid or not. But then if you have the tool which uh, you can generate on your uh, machine, then you probably don't need, need to software bill of materials from the, from the vendor or the, or the upstream. So, so this is an interesting situation. Uh, but definitely, yeah, everyone, including the author, including the vendors, including the customers, should have some tools which can generate the bill of materials. Uh, and they have the, should have the same output. This is, pro for, for me, the most important part of, of this. On one of the previous slides, you have uh, shown some graph, graph of numbers. What, so what the numbers are? What is the number of? OK, so the question is, uh, what the hell is this graph? Uh, so uh, this is. Uh, this show our migration of the SPDX licenses from the old Callaway system to the new SPDX format. Uh, the one, uh, blue one uh, show uh, like this start. Uh, uh, it actually started in December of last year. This is the point zero, and this blue one show uh, how many packages is already converted, uh, and this is estimation of how uh, with this. Pace, how how uh, how long it will take us to to the 100 percent, and this is uh, this yellow part is how many uh, how many uh, trivial conversion are available, and and I'm in a group with two two lawyers, and they uh, they probably hate me for the saying it's a trivial conversion because of. Uh, the, the audit is not straightforward because the not evaluating licensing. Uh, so you should uh, evaluate it, uh, but it's trivial from the point that uh, right now uh, the license in the old Callaway system is, for example, GPR version 2, and we have only one identifier in SPDX format uh, which equal, equals to the uh, old one. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this, this uh, um, red part, uh, that is uh, terra incognita, uh, because uh, that either means uh, that more options are, for example, uh, old Callaway system had a BSD identifier for BSD2 clause and BSD3 clause. And in SPDX, uh, we uh, have to choose what, which of them because they have different identifier. With MIT, the situation is even worse because MIT uh, in Callaway system represented, I think, eight or ten uh, SPDX licenses. Uh, and uh, it may hide even some licenses which don't have the SPDX identifier, which you have to apply for, and it may take a um, week or two months to actually get it to, from SPDX and get it to federal license data. Uh, so, so if you want to work on that, you should probably start quite as soonish. Additional 
this is uh, uh, this is all packages in Fedora. Uh, I, I, like packages in Fedora, in, in Fedora doesn't have this as bomb related to. to, to. Uh, as far as I know, in Fedora we generate uh, as bomb for the containers where the we take the container as only one part and, and uh, one file. So so we, as far as I know, we don't dive into the container itself. So it's super easy <laughs> build of materials. Yep. So the question is uh, why the trivial conversion are not trivially converted by automation? Uh, uh, yeah, because uh, because uh, I'm in a group of four, uh, two lawyers, uh, and I'm one of two engineers there, and uh, all other uh, things that we should evaluate it manually. Uh, because we at the same time change uh, the meaning of the license. So previously we can evaluate it, the license. Now we should not evaluate it. So, so uh, the license string in some cases actually change, even if it would be conversion from callaway system to callaway system, uh, because you add more licenses with some operator, license one or license two, for example. Uh, uh, and sometimes the license evaluation was done uh, pretty long time ago, and it may mean may not be true. And it actually happened. It's not so rare. Like last week, I was trying to convert the RPM itself, the RPM package, and it was not straightforward. Like RPM Web said that this GPL version two license, the copying say this is GPL version two. Uh, with some exceptions uh, for uh, RPM IO and RPM lib, uh, and uh, license ring in RPM header said something different. Uh, so we have three cases, and, and the issue is still open uh, in RPM GitHub. And I'm uh, discussing with Panu Mirohoranchok, uh, Neil, uh, like what's actually the final co concluded license. So, so it's. It's not straightforward, even in those trivial cases. So, so in this, so it's 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 hard. Uh, trivial is not so it's trivial. Not trivial. <laughs> Question. So the, so the question is whether is there is problem that we have two standards and whether we can. Okay whether we can convert from one to the other. I, I don't know. I, uh, likely yes, but I, I don't know. I never work with this format directly. Uh, so as I mentioned, I'm coming from the license part. Uh, so I was just querying what, what's around me, um, around the license part. So I don't know. So the question is, can you ask our Fedora package maintainer help? Yes, 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 you can. And, pl and please do, uh, because you know your package uh, well. Uh, and you know like whether there was some old system, like the RPM, which is 20 year old, uh, even more. Uh, uh, or whether it's new and like what the upstream say is true or you know which files are used there uh, and whether it's really trivial and you can convert it from GPL v2 to a GPL dash version dash 2 and that's it and you have five second job or whether you uh, audit it and know which files are there or whether, what can be the problematic part so you know it uh, very well uh, and we have tools like uh, license dash uh, Fedora to SPDX, which can help you convert the strings. Uh, there are other tools like scan code, uh, Ascalona CLI, license check, which can help you audit the, the files. Uh, so, so this is where you can help. And we are organizing um, workshops uh, and others. So, so if you hesitate with something, we can help you, but you know, more than we know, uh, so so please please help help us. And the, the ultimate goal why we are doing that in, in Fedora, and converting that like 
the so the material is things, SPDX <laughs> licensing st uh, strings are, are other things, and any other future uh, software which builds on auditing, on uh, um, management of licensing, will build on some industry standard, and that seems to be the SPDX, especially about the licensing. So, uh, so we don't want to do something uh, for just the moment which will handle the Tom Colloway system. So we want to use something new and industry standard, so other tools somebody else will use, use uh, the new standard things, and we are there as well as federal affairs. Other question? Okay, so no other question. If you will have any later, find me if you want to uh, help with conversion of your uh, package to SPDX identifier, let me know, I will do my best, so thank you.